Hi, I'm Rick. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ray Forjani. This is Kenosha Harbor Market Kitchen. Uh, we're here for our opening food demonstration for 2012. We're indeed lucky today to have a local international chef as our, our first chef, and it's uh, Tony Montalano of uh, Spiaggia fame as well as Manja fame and a, a whole series of restaurants in Chicago. Um, I'm kind of Happy for you, Ray. No, nice job, Ray. Nice job. So, uh, <clears throat> Tony is uh, going to show. Well, Tony, why don't you explain what you're going to do? I think I will. I won't do it justice. How's everyone doing today? Yeah. Aren't you happy that Ray fixed the air conditioning? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so those people that, that see this later, it's been uh, over 100 degrees for like four or five days. We got to the market this morning. It was. 84 and then 20 minutes later I had the air conditioning man left <laughs> and it dropped to 74. Keep so that just wonderful out there. Keep that connection. <laughs> so I thought what we would do today seeing as there's so many vegetables that are coming onto the market right now so many terrific vegetables it's just like the start of great produce because it's just going to get better for the next two months hopefully uh, or if not longer. Um, so I'm going to show you how to make a, uh, a pasta dish but without having to cook anything other than the pasta. And you can only really do this this time of year because this is when produce is at its best, as I said. So the fact that you're, we're gonna minimally cook this pasta, we're just gonna warm it so it's not even technically cooking, um, is gonna make it a lot easier to produce something like this at home this time of year. So we start by boiling water. Everyone know how to boil water? Yes. 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 How about salting your water? Everyone salt their water when you yeah. cook pasta? Yeah. Yes? It starts yeah. boiling, yeah. Yes? Why do, why do you wait till it starts boiling? Because the salt will corrode the bottom of your pan. Are you sure? Yes. You're sure? Yeah. Okay. Well, what, what the comment was is she doesn't like the salt before it boils because the salt corrodes her pan. I know it dissolves easier when it's boiling. It, it, it does. You're right. You're right. But uh, so, ask me because I've heard this. You, you put oil in it? No. 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 Well, I mean, some people do. How many of you put oil in your water? See, everyone's the only one person is, oh, has I'm the so courage. I do. <laughs> you do. Absolutely. Are you Italian, sir? Yeah. All right, that explains it. So. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the thing is, is that the salt, the pasta needs the seasoning as well as the sauce. So you want the salt, the water to be like sea salt. You want it to have the salinity of seawater, I mean. So it should be nice and, nice and salty because the pasta needs that seasoning. If you put water on your, in, your oil, in your water, oil in your water, excuse me, um, it just floats on the top. It doesn't really do anything. You know, oh, I don't know about that. Is that true? I'm not a physicist, but it sounds like a really good argument. Trust me. All right. Don't so, put oil in your water. So the argue, the point over here, if you didn't hear, it, was that the oil on top of the water stops it from boiling over. There's also a switch on your stove. You can turn it down. <laughs> or you can put cold water. Oh. Cold water would help too. Uh, Peggy talking. Peggy, thank you, Peggy. Um, so we have some dried penne pasta, and uh, because the amount of time it takes for me to prep all the vegetables is about the same amount of time it takes for the pasta cook to cook about 10 minutes, I'm going to go ahead and drop the pasta at this point. So how about rinsing your pasta? How many of you rinse your pasta? Wash the salt off. <laughs> So there's no reason to ever, ever rinse your pasta. Well, I take that back. There's one reason, if you're going to make a pasta salad. But other than that, there's no reason. You don't want to do that. Now, I'm going to cover this real quick so it comes back to a boil. Look at this nice cover I have. Isn't that a great cover? So while we're waiting for that to come to a boil, and we're going to keep an eye on it so it doesn't boil over, we're also going to start prepping some of the vegetables that are going to go in this dish. The first thing we have is some garlic, and this garlic is from Curcio, right? Right. Yep. You guys, we're vendors in Kenosha Arbor Market and vice president. Everyone know Curcio here? Oh, yeah. yeah. It translates into four languages for us. 
This English is, is in one of them. <laughs> <laughs> this is the uh, Romanian garlic. I don't know why. I don't know why either. But one of the things about the Romanian garlic is that the cloves are, are large. And what's nice about the large cloves is that they're a lot easier to peel. They take less time, less effort. And the way to peel garlic, the easiest way to peel garlic is to um, just place it uh, flat on your um, cutting board and take your knife and put it on top of the garlic, sort of back towards the handle, and just give it a wrap. And the peel will come off real easy, and the garlic is then ready to use. Now I'm gonna put this garlic in here whole because I just want it to season. I want, it, I want the flavor. Look at that, we got boiling water. I think one of the other mistakes people make is that they overcook their pasta because on the box of pasta it says cook this for 12 minutes or 9 minutes or 11 minutes. That's not really what they meant to say. They meant to say cook it for 9 minutes and then cook it together with your sauce for a minute and then as it takes one minute for you to walk from your stove to your table, you're now at 11 minutes. <laughs> So we have some beautiful zucchini. I love the zucchini. Beautiful zucchini from Barb's Garden. From Barb's Garden. And we're going to take the ends off. We're going to cut it in half. And then in quarters. Slice it thin enough. Again, so sweet, so beautiful. Can be eaten raw right now. But we're just going to warm it up with the, with the heat of the pasta. And the other magic ingredient that most people don't do when they're making pasta or is, is the pasta water. You always need a little bit of the pasta water. It makes the sauce nice and silky. So if you have a pound of pasta, reserve about a half cup of starchy water. Because that starchy water, add it back to your pasta after you strain it, put it back in the pot that you cooked it in, add the half cup of, of starchy water, and then add a couple ladles of whatever sauce, and then cook it for that minute. It'll be beautiful. So it makes it silky, right? It does. What's it called? What's what called? Did you say it was the pasta hair ceremony? I did not, but that's a really good way to look at it. So a lot of times when you make pasta, you strain the pasta, you put it on your platter, and then you put the sauce over the top, and there's still water on the platter, right? You, you, didn't, you thought you strained it well, but by doing the method that I just described of putting it back in the pot with the half cup of starchy water and the sauce, the pasta and the sauce marry. They become one, so we call that the pasta marriage ceremony. So, do you need a license for that? You, you are, everyone here is now ordained to go ahead and try that. I will guarantee you that if you do that, the next time you see Ray or I, you're going to say, you know what, that really is great. That works great. And I'll look for the ring. <laughs> You'll kiss the ring? Yeah, exactly. You know, I just wondered how I'm going to strain that pasta. That's a great question. That's a wonderful question. <laughs> I don't know. I, I have sort of a slotted spoon. Excuse me a moment. <laughs> All right, I'll good be luck. Good. <laughs> yeah, I better turn down his mic, Kim. <clears throat> so we also have some little cherry tomatoes or grape tomatoes that are all the way on the end down there on the left. And we're just going to cut those in half. Thank you. So has everyone here been to Manja? Yeah. Do you love manja? Yeah. Where's manja's booth? It's in the uh, fifth dimension. It's not. It doesn't exist. Uh, if you haven't been to manja yet this summer, we have a brand new patio, new furniture. It's beautiful. You should definitely check it out. Beautiful new landscaping. Great place for cocktails and pizza. 
So I'm cutting these grape tomatoes in half. How are we doing on a counter? <laughs> the calendar, we're going to have to strain it with this. Oh boy. Okay. To mix it? He's oh, he Thank you, though. You're welcome. So the only way to really test pasta is what? Eat it. Eat it. Then it's overcooked. If you throw it against the wall it's, and it sticks, it's overcooked. Yes, overbossed. What's that? Throw this overbossed. <laughs> so I would say it's not ready yet. Not ready. So we also have some uh, sugar snap peas from Barb's. And we're going to just sort of cut right across on those. The other great thing about this pasta is that easy to eat because there's a lot of the same shape. It's not a long pasta. You, you know, you can get everything on the fork. Well, I'm noticing that these are all about the same size. So that's about, about three quarters of an inch yep. square. They're about the same size. I see the same thing is true with the, the, uh, the snap peas. So snap peas, we're just going to give us this cut. Again, this is delicious right now because these are these are beautifully in season. Anyone have any questions? How about a question from somebody? Everyone been to Spiaggia in Chicago? Yes. Yeah. yeah, awesome. How's Bartoma doing? Thank you. That's my plant there. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, Bartoma's doing great. That's our new uh, gelateria pizzeria that we opened. I read your menu on the internet last night. Ah. Thank you. It's decadent. We also have a place in the modern wing at the Art Institute. I've been there. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. Called Terzo Piano. Oh. All right. What else? That's it, right? I think that's all. That's it. All right. Mozzarella. So we're going to check our pasta. And it's overcooked. Oops. <laughs> That's why I'm a cook and not a baseball player. What do you think, Ray? Another minute, maybe. Yeah. Well, it's close. So if we're going to cook it in the sauce, I would put it in now, but we're not cooking it in the sauce. Right. In the I would agree. So we also have some fresh basil from Barb's. And uh, the one thing about using fresh basil is once you put a knife to it, it tends to black, get black. And so we just rip it and it's, uh, it's much more flavorful that way. You don't, you don't really want to cook it. You just want to just add it here at this point just to warm up. And I can see you're not including the stems. No, not the stems for this, not the best thing. And they're pretty whole, but they'll disintegrate. Yeah. Well, they'll they'll melt. They'll melt. Yeah. Well. Disintegrate, melt, right? More or less, right? All right. So I'm going to attempt to try to strain this pasta now. Should we? Uh, I have the same. Want to do it? Uh, yeah. But I'm going to take that half cup of uh, starchy water. And right now, I'm just going to add it to these vegetables to warm them up. Wow, that was simple. I got one. So we just mix it up a little bit to get the hot water over everything. At this point, we can also add a little bit more sea salt or kosher salt. And now for the draining of the pasta. What do you want to do it? So I want to drain it into there. From here, right here? Yeah, nice maybe right away. down here, right? Perfect time. There it is. There it is. Right, right. She got you. Oh, look. Oh, nice. Wow. Someone went home. Beautiful. My hero wins. Where do you want to strain it? Right there. We'll go right back. And then, yeah, put that colander in there. Thank you very much. <laughs> It's like a, it's like a Top Chef competition. <laughs> Not that I don't trust them. So we drain the pasta. We got most of the water off. 
We had the rest. Watch out, that's hot. Uh, at this point, we want to add the olive oil. Now. Very good. <laughs> Go for it. You have my permission. Thank you. Well, I noticed that proportionally, there seems to be an awful lot more pasta than there is uh, vegetables. Watch. Watch, Ray. So the other thing, we have these little um, mozzarella balls, these little bocconcini. Um, anyone know what bocconcini means? It means small something. <laughs> Boca. Little mouth bite, little mouth, right. You sure these things are... Uh they're still good? They're locally produced. Oh, where, where are these produced? These are produced somewhere. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, we have salt in here, right? Yes. We have olive oil? Yes. Starchy water? And basil. Definitely wear an apron when you do this at all. Yeah. You just want to keep mixing it till everything gets well absorbed. The heat of everything will will begin to cook the vegetables slightly, slightly, slightly. But you're done cooking for this part. If you'd like more vegetables, we can add a few more tomatoes. As soon as we have them. Now there's the excess water. There's a little excess water. It'll be absorbed. I think so. I think. I think as it sits and rests, the pasta will continue to absorb it, because we really didn't stop the cooking at all. Um, I think Ray, you want to put a little more, a little more salt in there, and maybe a little more of your olive oil. Now black pepper would be great. Anyone have any black pepper out there? <laughs> I mean, crazier things have happened today. <laughs> yep. A little more basil. And we'll continue the tossing process. And as it sits, it'll begin to absorb the water. And this is best when eaten at room temperature. Would it be great if it cooled off? Yeah, but once you refrigerate it, it really changes the, uh, the whole flavor profile. When buying olive oil, see, all these ingredients are the best. I mean, the vegetables are from right here. The olive oil is beautiful. It's from Italy. But you want to buy the freshest possible oil you can. So when you go olive oil shopping, you know what to look for? First of all, it should come from Italy. <laughs> Second of all, you should make sure that um, it's fresh olive oil. How do you know that it's fresh? There's two ways. Uh, some of the producers will put um, the harvest date. You know, this was harvested in uh, November of 2011, so that's as fresh as you can get. Some producers, like this one, will put best if used by. And on here it says best if used by is 2013. So almost all of the time, the best if used by date is two or three years after the harvest. You really can't tell which, but the fresher the olive oil, the better it's gonna be. So when you're going shopping today or tomorrow for olive oil, look on there for a harvest date or a best if used by date. Look that it comes from Italy. The other thing is once you open it, how long do you think it'll last? Two years. Wrong. So you could probably get two months out of it, and that's only if you had it tightly sealed and in a cool, dark place, away from heat, away from light. If, it, if air is exposed to it or if it's in a really hot place, the olive oil is going to get, and you can tell by smelling it whether it's good or not. So who has olive oil in their cupboard from 1999? <laughs> It's not like wine. <laughs> yeah, use it every day. Extra virgin olive oil. People say, why do you cook with extra virgin olive oil? You should just use it on salads or things like this. Absolutely, but it's delicious olive oil. If you have the opportunity to use it all the time, you can use it all the time. Just be careful of how it burns. It burns a little bit lower. Pardon me? Can you drink it? Yes, sir, you can drink olive oil, and you can also use it as a hair tonic. <laughs> I didn't do it, but... Uh, <laughs> sunscreen? I think you might fry. <laughs> but you'll taste good. What? <laughs> yeah. So again, a great pasta to make when it's really hot out. All you really have to do is heat the house up with the boiling water. You're done. 
leave this sit for about five minutes. It gets better and better as it sits. Also a little bit of grated Pecorino Romano. Oh. Hope we got a grater. Anyone have any Pecorino Romano out there? <laughs> you got, we have a grater. He's got one. We have a grater. It just happens that we have some Pecorino oh, this, this Calabria. Oh, I love it. Crotonese. That one's open. So this is a uh, Pecorino Crotonese from Calabria. Uh, sheep's milk, delicious. Uh, the firmer, this is a, even more of an eating uh, pecorino than pecorino romano because it's a little bit softer. But nonetheless, it grates well. Tony, what other vegetables do you do? So, any vegetable, the only vegetable I think might, that might be a little difficult is eggplant because eggplant needs a little bit more time to cook. But I think tomatoes, basil, peas, asparagus, zucchini, arugula, spinach, uh, kale. Do you know kale is the new arugula? Did you know kale is the new arugula? All right, you, does this look, look good enough to try? Anybody want to try it? Oh, yeah. All right, let me do one more toss and once I get the cheese in there. Any questions? Not a question in the entire crowd. Sorry? Does the girl from Top Chef still work for me? You mean Sarah Grunberg, the runner up from Top Chef Texas, that one? Yeah. Yes, she does. In fact, she was just here at Manja last Sunday for Masters of the Grill. And she did a great job. How did you decide which kind of pasta to use? I mean, there's so many different shapes. Why did you pick this particular shape? Well, I think you want a shape that's a little bit shorter to go with the vegetables. So anything like rigatoni or cavatappi or fusilli, anything like that will work great with this. Farfalle? Farfalle would work great. So the size that matches the vegetables. Yes, this is one of those pastas where size matters, Ray. I can smell it now. It's like it's you the can, cheese, you right? Can smell the cheese and the basil. Yeah. All right. Was there another question? Yeah. Uh, again, the, the question is: yep, Olive oil and glass or plastic versus tin? So the point again to remember is that the enemies of olive oil are heat and light. So if it's in a can, you can seal it. It's fine. If it's in a bottle, you can seal it. It's fine. As long as it's dark glass, it's fine. Not you don't think plastic's good? No. The uh, one thing I've learned though is you really do have to be careful on how it's labeled. The new labeling law is helping with it, but in the past you could buy something that would say it's from a country. No. It only meant a bottle is there, it didn't mean it came from That's there. right. But now when you look at labels it, it's much clearer. They'll tell you if it's Mediterranean or it's Italian. Right, they'll tell you what country it's from. Any Mediterranean country makes great olive oil. You know, whether it's from Greece or Spain. Spain. Or Tunisia. Tunisia, France. Is France a Mediterranean country? Yeah. Yes, it is. Portugal, Provence. not a Mediterranean country, but makes great. Morocco's good olive oil. California thinks it's a Mediterranean country, but they still make good olive oil, too. <laughs> it is getting better. They, they only think they're a Mediterranean country, but they're. All right, any other questions? Let's eat. What time do we eat? What's that? Organic. So, Italians have been doing organic for centuries, so chances are it's, it's already organic, yeah. All right, can we give out samples or did I speak too soon? All right. Any other questions? Are you going to be at the U.S. Open? I am going to be at the U.S. Open, yes. So, uh, Kathy Montuano and I, take a bow, Kathy Montuano. Uh, we have. The woman behind the man. I think it's the other way around, but. Um, so, Kathy and I have a cookbook called Wine Bar Food, and uh, every year for the last four years at the U.S. Open, the tennis championships in Queens and Flushing, we have a little wine bar that we open. And, uh, Can you talk at the same time? No, oh, okay. I can't. I tried it and it was a disaster. Hands, right? uh, <laughs> anyway, yes, we will be there. What do you there. mean by that? Thanks for asking. Yeah, what do you mean by that? Excuse me. Questions? 
So please come to Manja. Check out our new patio furniture, our new patio. We're always doing special events, cooking classes. You just missed wine bar, or you just missed uh, Masters of the Grill. Uh, and, re and remember, it's always the third Saturday in June because the second Saturday in June is? No, Sunday, Tony. What did I say? Saturday. Oh, no, Sunday. Don't come on Saturday. It's not. Sunday's Father's Day, so right, thank you. The fourth Sunday in June. Fourth Sunday in June, thank you, Sue. Just go there every Sunday in June, you'll find And it. until you hit it right, thank you, Ray. All right, would you like to try some pasta? Sure. You want some pasta? All right. Thank you, by the way. Thanks for coming. Tell me when. Good. Sure. So by the way, this pasta is cooked al dente. Thank you. Uh, this isn't overcooked pasta. This isn't the pasta they serve at Fazoli's. This is properly, sorry, is anyone here from Fazoli's? Oh, uh, this is properly cooked pasta, so. It sat for a long time, too. See, uh, that's how, how incredibly uh, well this recipe works. Uh, no. Well, you're not, everyone's not going to get every vegetable, but we'll do our best. This looks excellent. Tony, I want to really thank you on behalf of the entire market for uh, joining us today and showing us how to properly make pasta. This was uh, Harbor Market Kitchen. Thanks.